Fly me to the moon Let me play among the stars Let me see what spring is like on a Jupiter and Mars Hello and welcome to today at the race is presented up by, presented by Fidelity First. I'm Stan Salter along with our odds maker Keith Fusto on a beautiful Friday as we get you ready for the big weekend of the year. Maryland State at the race is tomorrow, the 32nd Jim McKay, Maryland Million. Couldn't ask for better weather than today to kick off the weekend. Uh, absolute chamber of commerce kind of day. I know we like to use that phrase a lot, but it is absolutely gorgeous. Looking forward to tomorrow, but we're going to kick start it with a really, really good car today. Tough, tough car to kind of grind through but from a betting standpoint it opens up a lot of opportunities think you're gonna have to spread a little bit on this on this afternoon's racing card yeah nine live races we'll have a nice carryover in that pick six we'll get to all that but let's show you what's going on for the big day tomorrow uh, remember four days a week now friday saturday sunday and monday but tomorrow is the big day the 32nd jim mckay maryland million tomorrow free admission first race post time is 12 15 we have all kinds of action going on 11 stake races some of the best racing of the year tomorrow here at Laurel Park. Maryland sired horses, Maryland bred. You have the jailbreak beer garden, the kids corral on track events like the Clyde Sales, the pony races. You have the Maryland Million Hat Contest. Uh, best Maryland themed hat, best ladies hat, best dressed couple. And uh, this will be a popular one. Free Maryland Million hat mm -hmm. to the first 4,000 people that buy a program. I think with the, with the great weather we're going to have, the great racing that we have on yeah. tap tomorrow, nice drive by the racing office putting on a great card. I think the place is going to be packed tomorrow for a big day. Oh, yeah, it looks good. Some of the improvements I've just seen over the last couple of weeks that they've done really look good, especially up in that clubhouse area. Right. Second floor looks great. Uh, yeah, you better get here early if you want a hat. I think I think we're gonna run out. Well, run, yeah. we, we will. We'll, we'll, we'll. The place will be packed. So, members, uh, special first phase post time tomorrow mm -hmm. at 12:15 for Maryland Million Day. We start early today at 12:30. That'll be the normal post time going for, forward. For the rest of the fall, first race at 12.30, but tomorrow, the big Maryland Million Day, 12.15 for the first race, 11 races tomorrow. You better have your handicap and skills out because some tough, tough big fields tomorrow, big fields today. Let's get a, well, real quick, who do you like in the Classic to John Jones? Uh, John Jones, there's the field mm -hmm. for the Classic. Big 12-horse field. And this race opened up to Maryland Bred, so you have Maryland sired horses going against Maryland Breds. Both the Classic and the Maryland Million Sprint mm -hmm. opened up to Maryland Breds, and they're two of the biggest, best fields of the day. John Jones, your two-to-one morning line favorite in the Classic. It's a nice field. Who do you like? Yeah, tricky race. Uh, John Jones had just has had the one kind of race, the turf sprint coming back. Yep, yep. Has some speed right to his inside with Admiral's war chest. Maybe asking a little bit, you know, going a mile and an eighth. Uh, I'm sure Lacey's going to try to have him as good as she can possibly get him or he wouldn't be in here. Uh, bonus points. The blinkers have gone on. The numbers have gone up. Uh, caught a really good horse in Pavel last time or on the dirt. Yep. Uh, going to be awfully tough. There's, there's enough speed, I think. Bonus points will get a nice little setup. I'm probably going to – come down either the nine clubman or the 11 ghost bay is my top selection one of those two going for a little bit bigger price uh in the classic and if you like admiral's war chest the horses won this race two yep. years in a row yep. you're going to get an honest price on this one i i, I think 10 he might get bet down maybe as low as six i don't think he gets below that Eight too fast to yeah. catch. The only horse to win in uh, the Classic three times, uh, but has never been won three years in a row. So Admiral's War Trust uh, trying to become yeah. the first horse to win it three years in a row. And, yeah, I like your horse, Club Man, for the Red Hot. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Maldonado, uh, Club Man's won three in a row. And, yeah, Ghost Bay, I think Ghost Bay sitting on a big race yeah. as well yeah. for Robbie Bale. Yeah, so. Robbie's got him in good form right now. Yeah. All right, so that's, that's one of many big fields, one of 11 big fields for you tomorrow on Jim McKay, Maryland Million Day. Mm -hmm. Can't wait, but let's get to all the action today let's show you the conditions we're fast and firm this afternoon beautiful weather will be uh, in the upper 70s with an abundance of sunshine 
to have a perfect uh, main track and turf course today. Hey, SPF 50 in order today if you're out on hey, the apron, right. no doubt about it. Bring the sunscreen out. Yes. All right, I'll show you the carryovers. Uh, there's uh, track conditions fast and firm. We're on the bowl game in the Acceler turf course today. Nice carryover in the Rainbow Pick 6. That'll start race 4 today on the 9 race program. A little over 3,000 in that 20 cent Rainbow Pick 6. We have a little carryover in the Super High 5 starting in the opener. A little shy of $900 in that Super High 5 which starts in race 1. Let's get right to it. Race Good. 1. We're going 5.5 furlongs on the bowl game with the rail at 17 feet. Little carryover and that super high five, low 15% takeout in the super high five. Every race with seven or more horses, uh, they don't hit it in race one. It'll carry over to the next race with seven or more horses. Also, the opener kicks off that early pick five with an industry low 12% takeout. Mandatory payout on the early pick five. Let's take a look. Nice Maryland bread first level allowance contest here. Five and a half on the bowl game. And I go with the five. Dundalk's going to be a popular favorite here. Mm -hmm. In the opener for trainer Dove Houghton, three-year-old called by Baltimore Bob, gets Kevin Gomez to ride for the first time. This horse, a very good uh, second, I'm sorry, very good third, two starts to go sprinting on the turf against Open Allowance Company, cutting back in distance. He showed speed last out yeah. going two turns. Now I think he cuts back to his preferred distance today yeah. on the turf. I think Dundalk's going to be awfully tough here in the opener. Yeah, I think we found out he maybe just doesn't want to route. He's had an okay trip. I know they duel. They weren't really going that quick up front, but Temi Joyce has kind of disposed of them pretty easily at the head of the stretch. Uh, horses had some route experience, Temi Joyce. Turning back in distance, Dundalk clearly the most proven turfer in here. Uh, I'm going to go for a little bit higher price. I think Eastern Bay will wind up in that three or four to one range when it's all said. Now, a little little Maryland Million flair for you yeah. with Eastern Bay out of the Maracruz City makes this horse a half to John Jones, and we've seen John Jones run okay sprinting yeah. on this turf course. So yeah. Eastern Bay, a little freshing, ran pretty quick early on in that three-year-old career uh, on the dirt. E Dubai is about 14, 15 percent when they hit the turf for the first time, and and you know fair sound through the years he's had really good luck uh, teaming up with the owners Nancy Lee Farms. They've done yeah. well. Um, yeah. Three dollar and fifty one dollar ROI over the last five years for this owner trainer combination. Slight upset in the opener with the seven Eastern Bay, but Dundalk is clearly the one to beat. Yeah, um, uh, the back to the Eastern Bay. I like this horse a little bit coming off the layoff. Uh, Ferris trained the dam, won a stake race with the dam, mm -hmm. Krusicki. Uh, so he knows this family well. Uh, turf debut today for Eastern Bay. But like you said, John Jones uh, uh, won uh, was the Mr. Diz last year, yeah. a big 40-some uh, to one price sprinting on the turf. So uh, Eastern Bay capable yeah. of it. I use that runner in my top four. I throw the four takedown Charlie into my exacta from okay. the Corby Cayazo barn. Could be a big weekend for Sinatra Thoroughbreds and trainer Corby Cayazo. And this horse, uh, very good on the turf. Mm -hmm. Earlier this year, one, uh, uh, one turf sprint here at Laurel Park, a good second, and then a nice win sprinting on the turf at Pimlico last May. Uh, only a couple starts since, since then. Uh, a nice win up at Finger Lakes uh, on the dirt late September. So at least the horse has a recent race under his belt. He likes the turf. He gets Steve Hamilton. We'll de get a decent price here on the four takedown Charlie. Not quite as far as a commute for takedown Charlie today. Snuck up the Finger right. Lakes yeah, and, got the money. and got the money. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't really know how good this horse is. You you keep back, stand a three-back race on the turf at Pimlico, beat Zapata, who came back to run a lower 70 buyer next time out. Uh, so that kind of puts him in the realm of possibilities. The one, Dr. Bolt, tried the turf for the first time in 32 starts. Last time, it really didn't disgrace himself at all. A good third behind puts your seatbelt on a horse that's probably a little bit better than some of these A other than yeah. level horses. Runs, runs right around that kind of number. You know, he can run a mid to, mid to high 70. So, Dr. Bolt, uh, that was an okay field. Uh, I think you've got to respect him. Show that a little infinity for the turf first time out. Yeah, Dr. Bolt sitting on a big race. I drove by the Marco Salazar barn mm -hmm. the other morning. He was holding Dr. Bolt. The horse looked great. And Marco was high on the horse. So, okay. I'm just a little concerned about the one hole. Sure. He's going to have to navigate a good mm -hmm. trip coming from out of it uh, with the bug boy Luis Rodriguez yeah. aboard. So we both like right. Dr. Bolt there in the open. A nice little turf sprint from Maryland Bread Allowance Company to kick off the early pick five. Let's take a look here at the second race to kick off the the, the early pick four. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, take a look here. You have an early pick four ticket starting in the second race. Here we I'm go. Tell you, I was scrambling looking for a ticket today to uh, where to kind of really step in. 
tough sequence of race all the way through. I could not come up with a single on this card. So I said, all right, let's just go ahead and get it, get it out of the way early. Let's go with the early pick four stand. A $30 ticket too deep to get it started with the four industry leader uh, for Joan Reynolds and the six Sky Chaparral for Corrales. Five deep. We're going to spread in the third. A really good solid $15,000 uh, down the 12 claimer going a mile and 16th on the turf for the boys. Five deep in there with the one, two, three, five, six. Two deep in the fourth with the one and 11 and three deep in the fifth. One, six, and ten. That'll complete your early pick four ticket for $30. All right, all the pick fours always popular here at Laura Park. We'll have three this afternoon starting races two, four, and the late pick four will start in race six. But let's take a look here at the second race. Beat Nickel Field, five and a half on the main track. This is uh, claiming 5,000, three and up. Yeah, A in six months, never won four. We both like the four industry leader. Uh, let's show you a little video spotlight here. This horse's last race, yeah. September. 22nd going five and a half here at Laurel Park. Yeah, we're going to pick it up, you know, let's around the turn, uh, heading past the, uh, well, the 3 eighths. Yeah, there we go, past the 3 eighths, heading to the 5 16 and King's House on the front end. A really, really quick horse for Cartagena. Went out there and went pretty solid fractions, 22 and a tick, 45 and 4. But I tell you, industry leader did all of the grunt work in this race. Gets out to a little bit better part of the track, maybe the four path uh, turning for home. And on a day that you wanted to be outside, rain collector goes right on by. That horse was freshening and dropping, if I'm not mistaken. Say, but industry leader could have just clearly thrown in a towel, but did not. I like the way this horse continued willingly to the wire. There's no horse in here, I don't think, with a clear break as quick as him. Maybe Gavin Street sense, but he's got the inside. He's got to come away cleanly. I think industry leader can go ahead, clear this field, relax a little bit. Maybe it won't have to go that 45 and 446 opening half and, and can take them wire to wire. Yeah, Hernandez comes down the ride. This nine-year-old Gelding's made over 200,000 in very good form recently. The four mm -hmm. industry leader, both are top picks. I go 4 7 6 1. Did we already do that? I might have missed it. Who do you like in this race? Uh, I like the industry leader, Sky Chaparral. You know, bit off a little bit more. You know, he gets you last time out. Had the big win on the drop in class from April to September for Corrales. Drops back to a realistic level. This horse got a slower pace. He made a nice move into that slower pace. Two races back. Got a good, you know, 66 fire for this field. He's going to be tough, I think, right back somewhere. From You know, he'll make his move mid-turn, I think, to try to make a run at an industry leader. But, yeah, the industry. Joan's really going good right now. Last 90 days, yeah. Joan Reynolds, 21%. Uh, a horse running well here up in Charlestown. And you see this horse at the distance. Uh, four starts, three wins, and a second industry leader. This is his game, five and a half. All right, both agree on the four. I think the seven drive at night could rally to get uh, to be right there. And the exact, the three-time winner here, Laura Park. You get Caramanos. This horse likes to come from off the pace on the outside. He likes the outside. Drive at night gets an mm -hmm. outside post today. I think he can be right there in the exacta here mm -hmm. in the second race. And, uh, yeah, the one Gavin Street sends the bug boy. going to have to navigate a good trip from the inside. Yeah, he, he's going to have to. Came away a little slow last time. Was down against the grain of the racetrack. Uh, he, he has some figures that kind of put him right into the mix. And uh, Drive at night's kind of had his number late in the late stages of their races. Hurler's the one, though. Hurler's a real X factor. You're just talking about Marco Salazar. Yeah. Could he come alive? Barn been a little bit quiet of late. His back numbers, yeah, he, he, he sure. runs over these horses when he's right. Maybe Scott Chaparral has some numbers. This, this horse is okay uh, when right. I don't know what's going on in the last two. He just needs a little rebound, and he's going to sneak away at a good price for you today. Old classy group yeah. of beaten nickel claimers there in the second race to kick off the early pick four. Let's uh, take a look here mm -hmm. at the third race. We get back on the turf, going a mile and a 16th on the Acceler turf course with the rail at 70 feet here in the third race, claiming 15,003 and up, wide open. Mm -hmm. I go with the five. My top pick here. Wicked Heat's been in great form yeah. for trainer Tim Kreiser. I think the six-year-old's going to love the firm turf course today. He has a little early speed. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, and I don't think this race has too much no. speed. I think a Wicked Heat with Rodriguez is going to get a beautiful stalking trip. He'll get to the lead around the far turn, mm -hmm. and he gets very confident when he gets in front. He got he got in front last time uh, by four turn of her home, and that was enough to get to the wire going a mile. Uh, he's a, he's a five-time winner yeah. at this distance. He's a two-time winner over the Laurel Grass. I think Wicked Heat going. He hadn't run a bad race this year, really. Mm -hmm. uh, one race, on, and that was in the slop at, at Penn, so that doesn't count. Really steady. And this is not a real big jump up in class. No. I mean, he's proven at this level, as evidence a few races back at Penn National. Um, beat a key horse in Texas Zip, who's run well here for that 20 down the 15 range. Uh, scratch the nine forever Bernardini here. The, the, Daniel Ledoux uh, does draw in the 14. He's, he's got a shot. I mean, I, I wouldn't be afraid to leave, put him into the mix. 
It's a real tough race. I, I'm spreading around here. I'm going for some shots. I, I like I your pick because lack of speed. That's what yeah, you're going to yeah, say, right? yeah. Here's Johnny. I'm going to throw into the mix. I probably got this horse lined a little bit too high at 12. I mean, he might settle in maybe six, eight to one. I don't know if we'll get much lower than that. But he's proven on the turf. He can handle a route of ground. There's not a lot of speed. I think he gets a jump on Wicked Heat. And I like what they did. The five and a half furlongs, and they wheel him back a good sharp. Uh, half mile workout on the 15th i think this horse is all systems go to the front for a really trainer right now who's rolling jonathan Maldonado. Yeah, he, he is rolling and he's getting seven pounds off from wicked heat so that could help carlos carrasco good ride bug rider near yeah, maldonado 12 for 16 in the money here uh in a very tough laurel fall meet so and he's got a good shot with club man in the classic tomorrow so uh here's johnny we both like uh, at a decent price here we both like the two here dream man the nine-year-old's gonna get a nice ground saving trip here with sheldon russell aboard this horse likes to come from out of it so if there's a slow early pace uh then that that's not gonna help the two dream man yeah the, the, he wants a quick up front you see the two back comment when he was on the turf off dual swung seven wide in a bid uh, for this level, uh, Potts has gotten some of these horses coming in from New York for Contessa, yeah. and, and really they've held it for him. Some of them even moved up nicely. So uh, Dream Man, if he gets a little flow, he's going to be awfully tough. Uh, here's the mic you have in your uh, in, in the exact. This horse, a real nice win against two other than Allowance Company. Three starts to go back in August here at Laura Parks. Kind of fallen apart since then. Beaten, yeah. favored, uh, last out against Open 20 here at Laura Park. Not sure what happened to this horse. Well, here's another horse. A beaten favorite last time is going to slip away and probably go close to double-digit odds for a barn that, that yeah. wins at a high percentage. Yeah. Uh, yeah, three just three races ago. A, a good effort behind motivational bombs away. Some okay horses. Don't know what happened the last two, but we're back with Santana. Maybe this is key. You know, he, he got a good effort out of this horse on August the 11th. Um, once, I've got to take some stabs at some good prices in, in race number three. Yeah, it's a nice big field here going long on the turf. We should have a big handle here mm -hmm. in the third race. Go deep in this race if you're playing the early pick five or the early pick four. Bunch of classy horses, and you'll get a nice price on them in the third race. Let's get a quick commercial break. Nice carryover today in that 20-cent rainbow pick six. A little over 3,000 in today's carryover. Starts with race four. We'll tackle that right after this. Welcome back today to races presented by Fidelity First. I'm Stan Salter, Keith Fuse. So we're live here by the historic Laurel Park paddock on a beautiful Friday to get you ready for the four-day race week. That's right, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, of course, the feature this weekend, the 32nd running of the Jim McKay Maryland Million Day. Maryland's Day of the Races, 11 stake races for you tomorrow, expecting to, to be a huge day tomorrow. First race post, 12-15 tomorrow but 12 30 first race post today here at laurel let's get right to it race four is going to kick off this 20 cent rainbow pick six nice carry over today's three thousand forty nine dollars in the pick six they'll put another two three thousand new money into it today and uh let's see race four is a nice maiden claiming forty thousand for two-year-old fillies going five and a half furlongs on the main track here this race also kicks off the middle pick four and it's a nice group of two-year-old fillies we have a stat here on trainer mike trombetta who has a nice uh, a, a powerful entry, a, well, a powerful first-time starter yeah. in here, the one number of the stars. Yeah, this horse uh, uh, scratched the 1A steamy hot. Another one, it could be lined just a hair too high. Went back, uh, did not get a chance to look at the breeding early when doing the line. It came back to it. Number of the stars, her damn star number. One for six and four for six in the money with first-time starters. Uh, her runners, with her runners at two, I should say. Uh, they were combined five for 18. Okay, so there's precociousness here in the breeding for the one number of the stars. Uh, by grade R, uh, th this, this horse is going to be tough. A half to Hardigan, who was two for five at two, who yeah. ran close to, you know, mid-70 number. Uh, I, I like the one in here to get it started. Kind of a, a little sketchy feel, but this horse, I think, will be well-prepared for Mike. 
I uh, perhaps so. No, I, I do use the one in, in my. Uh, I do. No, I, I meant the. Uh, I'm supposed to be. Uh, yeah, here we go. The here we go. Up. Okay, Le r race four. Here we go. Eleven, six, five, twelve for me. Here we go. Let's uh, take a look here okay. at the eleven and uh, and and Chan. I, I perhaps foolishly. Uh, well, no. Let's start with your top pick. Uh, the the number of the stars. Mm -hmm. I perhaps foolishly overlooked this filly. Uh, some nice works here, Laurel Park. Couple five for a long works on the tab, and a bullet three for a long work recently. Uh, gets a, a good uh, mid pack draw mm -hmm. with Forest Boys of Bore Lasix in debut. Uh, so yeah, and um, yeah, but it'll be interesting to see uh, how the money comes in early on this. Yeah, I, like I say, I think I might have this horse just a little bit too high. Uh, the family, other members, sassy number. You remember yep. from around here? How yep. about Struth? I have to Struth. Struth. Yep. Pretty quick. So uh, I think this horse is going to be okay right out of the box. All right, we both like the 11 on the outside. My top pick, mm -hmm. and goes for trainer Hammy Smith, two-year-old filly by Go Sapper, and uh, she didn't break very well in her debut, but she recovered, came with a wide rally, finished a good third behind Pearl Jim, Pearl Jim, and the Maryland Million mm -hmm. Lassie tomorrow here at Laurel Park. Joe Moore, we had a bug boy on this uh, filly for the debut. Now we get a journeyman rider, Joe Moore Torres, mm -hmm. a much better outside post than what she had with that inside post in the, in the debut. And uh, since since the, uh, since that debut, a nice 48 half mile work here at Laurel Park. So uh, all systems point and go here for the 11 Enchanted Ghost. Yeah, the other hammy horse. I should have the 12 there. Third guys, one 11, 12. Probably fat fingered it on when I was typing them in today. Uh, the other hammy horse, similar running style uh, on the turf as the 11. Kind of a flash, a little speed, drop back and came again. I like when the horses kind of run that little pattern. Uh, I think this horse should transition fine. Uh, Fixius was two for nine at two. We've got some family members who run okay. Uh, on the dirt. Yeah, I'm looking for a bomb bomb and, you know, throw maybe a, a net Eubanks into the mix. Hate to see, you know, misheard a big price. Sure. Uh, Lace gets those on. You know, inside, outside kind of trip and debut. Uh, I probably should like the six, Seminole. I don't know why I didn't use this horse. Looks like the speed. A little softer pace comparatively that day to the other race that was run. Uh, the Margie's Money race, but kept on well and and was inside on October the first, where really you didn't want to be. Uh, I I used the six yeah. in, in the yeah. exact real, real That's a smart move. Yeah. Um, uh, but it, zero for eight, you just have to wonder at you know what what's the number where okay this horse ain't gonna win at two. Let's send the horse to the farm and. And, and yeah, try to salvage a, a career mm -hmm. after two. I mean, uh, this horse, I, I picked the horse second, uh, the honest filly for sure. Mm -hmm. She's finished fourth, uh, um, uh, she's finished second four times, some eight starts, but you just have to wonder at, at two, uh, yeah. is she going to start getting discouraged and, and it's just learning how to get beat? Like, uh, yeah, but her, her experience here gives her a little advantage. You can see yeah. the horses that have run haven't really yeah. shown a ton of speed. Uh, so she probably is going to be up up close to it, shortens up just a little bit, as we said, held well against the bias on, on the first. Uh, Kieran's firster. Uh, we know he, don't, he doesn't run a ton of two-year-olds, doesn't run a lot of firsters, but look at that, Mary. Coquettish, uh, she was three for four at two yeah. and, and has had a couple uh, debut runners from five starters. And another one you might want to lose goes was kind of old money man Pimentel Lasix yeah. goes right. on a lot of a lot of angles a lot of a lot, a lot of places to go in race number four. Yeah, Pimentel uh, had a nice debut winner a couple weekends ago for Trombetta Oldies, but Goodies a twenty dollar debut winner. But I, I'm sticking with Hammy Smith. Hammy Smith okay. red hot recently yeah. had a three win day last mm -hmm. weekend. Barnes really rolling. We know how good he is with two year olds. So tough tough uh, group mm -hmm. of two year old fillies here in the fourth race. But yeah. I go with uh, Hammy Smith on top. But uh, I like the breeding there. Your first timer, uh, the Trombetta first timer, number of the stars. This is like a maiden special weight here. Yeah. A lot of Maryland bred, Maryland side horses that are in for the waiver here in the fourth race. So a tough leg mm -hmm. to kick off the pick six. Let's uh, turn the page here. Race race uh, five right. is going to kick off. Uh, talking about fat. Here we go. Race five is going to kick off the late pick five. No carryover mm -hmm. today, but as uh, as always, we have that industry low 12% takeout on the late pick five. I have a ticket. Let's take a look. $32 ticket for me today. I'm going to go four deep here in races five and six. Race five is a tough 16,002 life turf sprint using four runners in there. My top pick, uh, I'm using the 16911 with my top pick on the outside, the 11 Pearsonator from the Hugh McMahon barn at a six to one. So four deep there in race five going four deep in the sixth race that's an open 20,000 Philly and Mare turf route using a 2-4-6-10 uh, in, in that race with my top pick being the two sassy little cat I think is going to get a nice setup with Sheldon Russell aboard and then race uh, race seven's a nice Malin bred allowance Philly and Mare 
three quarter on the main track. I'm just going with two runners in there. Anna's Bandit, second off the layoff for Jerry Robb, and Have Hope, good second at this level. Last out, then race eight, nice uh, first level allowance feature of the day, five and a half on the turf. I'm gonna key on the five. Top Hat City there for trainer Wayne Potts, four for four in the money here on the Laurel Grass, a win in three seconds. Top Hat City in very good form, gets Jevion Toledo, a key on the five in race eight. Going only two deep here. Nice maiden special weight turf sprint to close out the day. I'll go with the three. Arrow over Dirty from the Hugh McMahon barn. And the eight, Paul the Waiter, uh, who was a good second in debut here at Laurel at 72 to 1. So late pick five ticket, no carryover. But as always, more money back to you, the better with that low 12% takeout. Can I get live here in race five going four deep with yeah. the one six nine eleven? This is a 16,000, two life, three and up. Five and a half on the Acceler rail at 70 feet. And I go to the outside here. Pearsonator, mm -hmm. uh, what happened last time? The horse had to break from yeah. the inside. It was a beaten favorite at this level last out, but had to break from the inside. A uh, steadied upper stretch. Mm -hmm. So had all kinds of traffic going against this horse last time. Gets a much better outside post today with that speed. I think it's going to be very dangerous uh, for the Red Hawk connections of Katie Davis, Hugh McMahon. Yeah, yeah, we use it up, term wide open all the time. And this is another one. Uh, race number five. I, you, you go what four or five deep in here? Four, yeah, started. One, one six, yeah, nine, I, eleven. I, 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 I see a myriad of, uh, of chances in here. I, I ended up on Oyster Soup. I, I think there's enough speed. Uh, gets the right kind of rider in Forest Boys. This horse can kind of maybe steadily advance to contention. Head of the stretch. Maybe has the best finishing kick. Three races back. Made a little bit of a premature move from that outside post. Uh, I think Forest will relax this horse. Make a, make a good run from off of it. Gotham Boy is live. The Barn Figgins. Everything he runs on the turf, you got to respect. Yeah. Love you much for, for Ferris Allen. He's another horse uh, today for Fer Ferris that I like. Um, look at that September 23rd race on the turf. Uh, 21, 3, 44, and 1, 101 and 4. Just, you know, did a lot of the dirty work in a really, really quick internals. Put your seatbelt on was uh, like 21, 2, 43, 4. A, that's a good measure. That was a good horse. Put your seatbelt on it. We talked yeah. about him a couple times a day. Love you much. Might get the jump on the field turning for home. I think I think he'll sit just off a of party region, try to put him away. Can he, can he kind of hold off the closers is the main concern for me. He is getting a drop in class yeah. from his last turf sprint, which was against 25,000 starter allowance. Uh, this 16-2 life spot, a lot easier today for the 10. Love you much. I uh, I don't have that horse uh, on my uh, okay. late pick five, but I, uh, you know, with Caramanos aboard at 8-1, to one, probably should use the 10. Mm -hmm. Love you much. But I like your top pick, the one oyster soup. I think yeah. Forrest Boyce is going to save ground and spy the early speed yeah. yep. and either look for uh, a seam up the rail or swing wide turn over home i like the one oyster soup uh, i have that horse uh, you, you make me a little nervous you don't have my top pick anywhere pearsonator uh, but that horse um uh, i do like that horse so I'll, I'll throw your 10 love you much in there as i well. wish they could give me seven yeah. or eight picks in this right. race Dan. that's how tough it is yeah. the, the 16 two lives going yeah. short on the turf always a wide open scramble uh, we'll see. I go outside. Keith goes inside here in race five. Let's take a look at the sixth race to kick off the late pick four. We're going a mile on the bowl game rail at 17 feet here in race six, claiming 20,000. Philly and Mayors three and up wide open here to kick off the late pick four. I think a whole lot of speed in this race, a ton of speed. Uh, the one has some early speed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the uh, D Marquis tough to rate. She could, might have yeah. some early speed. We know what the six Emelina does. She's going to the front. Carries Nene. Uh, not, has a little speed. Uh, the 10, St. Mamie, has some speed. So I think with all that speed, I go with the 2, Sassy Little Cat. I think Russell's going to save ground, be about mid-pack with cover down the back stretch, and just look for a whole turn of her home. I like the uh, 2, Sassy Little Cat. Coming out of two other than allowance right. races up there at Park, so those are tough races. Benica Bentley does a nice job up there at Fair Hill. Russell, he's been on a roll recently. I like the two sassy little cat here in race six. Yeah, you talk about the, the flow of this race really could be advantageous for sassy little cat. I, I think Sheldon will be able to uh, you know, generate a really, really good trip uh, with his six-year-old mare kind of moving back up the ladder in numbers wise i think she can peek back around maybe run close to an 80 could get it done she got the best of uh of saint mamie this of course may have still just a little bit of giving a ground yeah. just because of the temperatures and stuff but uh she'll be fine uh this afternoon i i think a key scratch in here we scratched the 11 abrac uh the eight abracadabra which brings in the 11 janine melnitz and uh, i'm not worried about the outside post i like this horse stretching back out uh, was too close to the pace in those prior two races, uh, the May 19th race at Pimlico and the 26th at Delaware. This horse wants to be taken a little further back. I think the Caramanos will do that, drop in, and make a run. 
this horse fits nicely at this level. Well, interesting here. This horse draws in off the A.E. Caramano. Yeah, who's right? Sen Is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, Centron. Centron. My bad. My Cent bad. Centron Thanks. gets uh, on the 11. Mm -hmm. Janine okay. Melnitz. Caramano stays on the 4. D. Marquis, uh, which is interesting. And I, I, I'm not giving up on D. Marquis yet. She was very, very talented mm -hmm. at three. Remember, that was a claiming crown preview race on uh, November 1st back in 2015. Yeah. She beat that nice older mare, mm -hmm. Seeking Treasure, in there. Got an 84 buyer. And then only two races last year as a four-year-old. She had a nice win last year. And just uh, they've had a hard time getting her back into top form this year as a five-year-old. This will be her third start back. Caramano stays aboard. Mm -hmm. they're, they're dropping her uh, from the allowance company here in, in that. I don't know if this is too much of a drop, uh, but their third race back, I think she could show up. And interesting that Caramano's uh, decides to ride the four D yeah. Marquee. Yeah, I mean this, this is this is a tell right here. This is the race. It's kind of probably kind of dictate her future when right. when you really break it down. It, it, it's kind of I'd say now or never this early, but yeah, a little rank last time out was down inside. There were a couple of races, uh, a couple of horses on the fifteenth that were down towards the inner part. Maybe really didn't like it. And we saw a tendency, maybe the outer portion of the turf course, both of them. Over the last week, 10 days has been, you know, the, the place to be. Uh, D. Marquis may be able to sit and make a wide swooping move. You're right. She, she showed flash some talent, hasn't gotten back to it yet, but still improved dramatically from the first race back there, Stan. I'm yeah. four deep yep. on my late pick five. I don't have the 11, but that horse is going to worry me. I probably should use the horse protectively. Strong connections there. Centron, mm -hmm. Trez Abbott, and you'll get a nice price there on the 11. Janine Melnitz, who does draw in off the AE there. And race six. All right, let's turn yep. the page here. Race seven, a nice Maryland bread. First level allowance contest for Philly and Mares going six furlongs on the main track. And the two Anna's Bandits, a good Philly. It's supposed to be a really good Philly for trainer Jerry Robb. He bred this Philly. He owns this Philly. Three-year-old Philly by Great Notion. Showed a lot of ability last year when she was two. She won her debut. She was second in the debutante down there at Churchill last year. She came off a long layoff, flashed out uh, against a tough allowance field. She went off, what, the four to five favorite mm -hmm. that day and just got a little tired. She probably needed that race. Yeah. I think we'll see a much better Anna's banner today, second off the layoff. Katie Davis stays aboard. Uh, she has a nice five furlong work here at Laurel Park since that comeback race. I'm not uh, crazy about the inside post. Hopefully she can break with a little more speed and be in good stalking position early on here. Yeah, that's, that's the other thing is, I mean, who is uh, the speed? Is, is Have Hope going to be able to kind of just go out? Out there and run away with the I don't know I think I think the five this song is about you right we see trying about to get these horses off a little bit of a freshening yeah. and get them come back I, I think she's she's another flashed a little bit of ability needed that break She's come back for breaks before to run well. And uh, Trombetta and Johnson, they've been a heck of an owner-trainer combo yeah. over the last uh, m couple months. They've run really, really well. I, I think she's going to be able to just kind of take the measure of Half Hope, who's on the best part of the racetrack on the 22nd. Uh, this song about you gets the lead, goes clear. She's going to have to hold off Anna's Bandit. And, and I think Sazerac Girl and even six tons of fun as a user I'm going to use it as a price. I think maybe they claim this horse just targeting the Maryland bred allowance. Uh, six tons yes. of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice win uh, last out when it came off the turf. Forest Boys uh, rides back the uh, the the five. Uh, though the, this song is about you, your top pick. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, she's capable on her on her best game, but she tailed off a little bit there, uh, tailed off a little bit last spring. Maybe that turf sprint back in May uh, got her back in good form. Yeah. They've given her the summer off. Yeah. Some nice works here at Laurel Park, including three bullet works. So. Um, the, the the five could be dangerous if she gets loose on the on the front end. I just go two deep here okay. uh, in this race on my uh, late late pick five. The two and the four. How about the four? Have hope here. Good second at, at eleven to one uh, at this level. Last out, she rolls got loose on the lead yeah, for Hartzell did. out in the middle of the track for Prado that day. Uh, but she rolls uh, hung on for. I mean, so I'm sorry. Have hope ha hung on for a good second. I thought that day. Yeah, she did. She did. Whereas Anna's Bennett, your other selection, was down inside pretty much the entire trip. Right. Uh, I expect her to rebound uh, clearly in her second race off the layoff. So I looked at six tons yeah. of fun a little bit there. That was an yeah. interesting uh, claim there for Donnie Barr. He doesn't claim too many horses. Mm -hmm. uh, he must like this horse uh, to run. And I bet you not for love, Mayor. They're claiming they're looking to breed this horse probably uh, no. as, as well. Yeah, she's got a, she's got a seventy four buyer on the dirt. You know, which is is that yeah better than anybody in this field. To right. come back to, and I mean, she she kind of ramped up, got her form a little bit better on the turf. Uh, she transitioned on that off the turf race last time. 
factor. Yeah, good little competitive field uh, uh, in race seven. All right, race seven kicks off the final pick three of the afternoon. Race eight allowance feature of the day. It's a first level mm -hmm. allowance contest. Three and up, five and a half furlongs on the Acceler turf course rail at 70 feet. This race kicks off the late daily double. We have a video spotlight here of the five. Top Hat City, my top pick. This horse in very good form for trainer Wayne Potts. Here's a race on September 17th here at Laurel Park with Jevy on Toledo up. He talked about it. Another horse, you know, that he he kind of was sent back up to, up to New York with to Gary. Comes back to him. Uh, Top Hat City ran an 84-2 race back on the 17th. You're going to pick him up on the outside, though, uh, in those black and, and yellow blinkers. And he was caught wide, four or five wide every step of the way. Looked like he was all done uh, nearing the top of the stretch with five sixteenths to go. Uh, Toledo gets him back in. Gary levels off nicely through the final eighth of a mile. Shifts out a little bit late. Uh, just comes rolling the miss. I mean, good effort. Gets beat a half a length. Uh, moves back inside a little bit today with some speed. Top Hat City, I like how he showed the ability to close last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah very versatile. He went to the front two starts ago on a yielding turf course. Came from off the pace, last out on a firm turf course. So, uh, nice three-year-old by City Zip here, the four, the five, Top Hat City. Mm -hmm. He's my key horse on the late pick five. You you have him in, in the top three. Mm -hmm. You have the one on top. I, I overlooked his horse altogether. First off, the claim for uh, trainer Anthony Ferry. I tell you what, the barn's been going well as of late. Four winners from ten stars. Starters this fall meet here, uh, Tam Tam attack making his turf debut today with Sheldon Russell. Yeah, I'm kind of going against the two. Uh, the, the, the lukewarm morning line favor, which you know with the Clement, uh, the New York Morse might come down even further. Right. Um, Morse might have a touch of phony. I, I, I'm not sure. I think he's gonna uh, he's gonna send towards from the inside. There's a little bit extra speed. It's gonna be interesting that what the ten does from a speed factor. Uh, Silent Tail has even showed some really good speed uh, in the past. But uh, a little stranger here with the one Tam Tam attack just on breeding. Uh, looking back, the mare Sarah Secret uh, by Lerod de Semino. Sarah Secret two for five on the turf. A great two winner going longer. The problem is that the original owners, $270,000 purchase, ran the source for a tag first time out. Uh, then they go made special eight wins, freshening, back in for a tag. They, they reached in and grabbed it, you know, yeah. Super C. Wolf, we've seen a couple of these claims down here for fair, come back and run well yeah. out of Kentucky. Uh, maybe this one can follow suit. He did, uh, yeah, a couple of weekends ago. He had a, a first off the claim. Miss Cobblestone, that's yeah, what it they, was, Yeah, they right. claimed from Churchill, mm -hmm. yep. yeah. So I, I overlooked the one. Might get a tough post down there. On the inside, uh, you you go against the two altogether. Seeds. I like the fact this horse went six and a half furlongs last out mm -hmm. at Kentucky Downs, cutting back a half furlong today. Should be dead fit for strong connections. Uh, the horse had had a tough trip two starts mm -hmm. ago at Saratoga. Uh, showed speed in the in the uh, the 2017 debut in June. So I don't really, I don't think he's won a he's run a bad race this year. He finds easier spot uh, easier yeah. spot here today. So Centennial probably going to try to get a little early speed out of him. Uh, breaking from the inside. I, I use them in my exacto. Hopefully he breaks sharp and gets good position early on uh, the two C's. Yeah, he looks like he probably doesn't necessarily need the lead. Uh, you see the comment, two races back, buried, uh, you know, behind the horses. So, yeah, respect the outfit. Uh, I mean, Ventry Bay, the second-place finisher last time, I came back to run a good mid-'80s buyer at Belmont. But, he, you know, the one thing that gives me chant hope with some of these other Maryland horses in, in here, Gray Fox. It keys up with Gray Fox. It was a horse we saw as a Kelly Ribley horse running Pimlico yep. and took him a couple times to get through the condition. Um, and that's why I think you know, even t a little horse like Tempt Me Twice is live right back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a nice race. Mm -hmm. I, I almost picked the 10 and a Soit on top. I ended up just liking the 5 and 2 better, but on a Soit uh, going in the right direction. He's won two in a row sprinting on the turf here at Laurel Park mm -hmm. for trainer Tom Morley. Uh, Caramano is going to get a, a good trip on this three year old son of Shackleford today. Tougher race today. He's stepping up in class, but I think the 10 with that outside speed and Caramano is going to get a good trip here in race eight to feature. All right. Nice allowance uh, turf sprint there to kick off the late daily double. Here we go. Race nine of the day. Race nine, a nice maiden special weight, five and a half furlongs on the bowl game turf course rail at 17 feet. This is for uh, maiden special weight, two year olds in this race. And uh, I go with the three here. Ara Verderci, I hope I'm saying the name Arriva right. Derci. Okay, there you Arriva go. Derci. Arriva Derci. Arriva thank Derci. you guys. Arriva <laughs> Derci. All right, I'll, I'll be hearing about that. Arriva <laughs> Derci for trainer Hugh McMahon. I thought the debut against Maiden Special Weight at Delaware, pretty good. A good second up there. Uh, the horse got carried out a little bit wide at the quarter pole. And then the Maiden Special Weight here at Laura Park. That was a very tough race, won by Cordmaker. This horse didn't uh, didn't uh, 
break very well. Mm -hmm. Had some traffic problems uh, in that race still. A, a good fourth against Tough Maiden Special Weight Field. Now turf debut here mm -hmm. for the son of Geralimo. Katie Davis gets aboard. Hopefully he'll show the uh, he'll show a little early speed like mm -hmm. he did in those dirt sprints. If he can show a little early speed, breaking from the three hole here, he'll be in a good spot. Yep. I'll go with the three on top here. We'll probably get a decent price in the last. Yeah. Uh, Mayor could handle the turf. One for nine, five for nine in the money. Is half to a four-time turf uh, sprint winner. Over at Dirty. So, yeah, the three is respectable. I know we're a little short on time. My, my top selection is going to be the five. Highland Bowl for Tommy Proctor. More than ready. They only hit for about 11, 12 percent first-time starters. Um, but uh, the mayor, really good. Multiple greatest stakes winner on the turf sprinting. This horse is a half to Caribou Club who ran real big here in its right. debut. Was it last year? Behind I Great Bulls so, of Fire yes, and behind yes, yep. Emmy Soar. So I, I'll take the five on top uh, with uh, Proctor and Costrenzo. Will be a well bet, uh, well bet debut runner by More Than Ready. <coughs> the five uh, Highland Bowl. I use that runner in my top three. And we both like the 11. Gallows Bay is probably going to get bet as well. A first timer for Arno Delacour, two year old by Stormy Atlantic. Bunch of nice works up there at Delaware. Delacour. Uh, gets his main rider Centeno. This horse should get a nice trip from the uh, from the 11 hole. Be interesting to see how much early money comes in on the 11 mm -hmm. Gallows Bay. No doubt, and uh, maybe a, a little price shot. Ali Figgins, the one Mojo's Louis Louis Cat uh, by Mickey Moto's Mojo. If I if I looked at this right, I think he's only had five runners. Two of them have won first time out. Right. And, and Figgins on the turf, as we talked about, deadly. Look at this first turf. ROI close to $7. Don't let this horse uh, beat you at a big price. All right, nice competitive maiden special weight going five and a half on the bowl game to wrap things up this afternoon. Hope you're live and all your will pays. Dave Rodman, he's coming up next all of today's scratches and changes. First race post time today, 1230 as we kick off Maryland Million Weekend. Should be a beautiful weekend. Good luck. Good luck.